Explorer X here. Time for the biggest collection of cryptids and folklore beginning with the letter A. This is the largest collection with the letter A anywhere to be found on the entire internet. Leave a comment if I was correct or you know of anything close to this. Because I think this is an internet's first and definitely a YouTube first. Something to mention, without 1000 subscribers, I won't be continuing this channel after April 23rd, this rests on your shoulders. If you want this channel to become something very special, share with your friends, family and on social media. Let's begin. The Abominable Snowman is a creature said to inhabit the Himalayan region of Nepal, Bhutan, and Tibet. The Yeti is typically described as a large, ape-like creature that is covered in thick fur and is said to be able to survive in the harsh, snowy conditions of the Himalayas. The legend of the Yeti has been passed down for generations among the people living in the Himalayan region, and there are many different stories and descriptions of the creature. Some believe that the Yeti is a type of ape, while others believe it to be a bear or a large, unknown mammal. Some describe it as being tall and bipedal, while others describe it as being shorter and quadrupedal. The first Westerners to hear of the Yeti were the British mountaineers who explored the Himalayas in the early 20th century. They heard the stories of the locals and reported them back to the Western world. But it was not until 1951 when a British mountaineer, Eric Shipton, took a photograph of a Yeti footprint, that the Western world began to take notice of the creature. Over the years, many expeditions have been conducted to search for the Yeti, but no solid evidence of its existence has been found. Some scientists believe that the Yeti is a real animal, possibly a type of bear or a large, unknown mammal that has managed to evade detection. Others believe that the Yeti is a legend or a cultural construct, as is a vampire-like creature that is part of West African folklore. It is known for its ability to transform into a firefly and prey on human blood. The creature is said to possess its victims, causing them to fall ill and eventually die. According to legends, an ads can be encountered when a person follows a bright firefly deep into the forest. Once there, the firefly transforms into a beautiful woman, who reveals herself to be an ads. She offers to spare the person's life in exchange for becoming her servant and bringing her the blood of other villagers. Those who agree to the ads's demands will soon fall ill as the creature drains their life force. Eventually, they will be unable to continue fulfilling her demands, and the ads will kill them. In some traditional stories, it is said that an ads can also possess a person and cause them to act as its servant without their knowledge. This could lead to the person committing terrible deeds and being blamed for them. However, there are also ways to protect oneself from an ads, according to the folklore. One way is by placing a red pepper in the room where it is hiding. The ads will be burned when it enters the room, and this is said to be an effective way to defeat it. Another way is by using traditional rituals and ceremonies such as consulting with a local diviner, who can identify if someone is possessed by an ads and provide a ritual to drive it out. The ads is a powerful and feared creature in West African folklore, known for its destructive nature. It is also a symbol of the consequences of giving into temptation and the importance of staying true to one's moral principles. The ad serves as a reminder of the dangers of greed and the dangers of making deals with evil entities. One popular story is about a young man who was out hunting, he saw a bright firefly and followed it deep into the forest. The firefly led him to a beautiful woman, who revealed herself to be an ads. She told him that she would spare his life if he agreed to become her servant and bring her the blood of his fellow villagers. The young man, terrified, agrees to her demands. Over time, the young man becomes more and more ill as the ads drains his life force. Eventually, he is unable to continue bringing her the blood of others and she kills him. Another story is about a woman who was possessed by an ads, which caused her to act in strange ways and harm others. She was eventually helped by a diviner who performed a ritual to drive the ads out of her body, saving her from its wrath. The Afank is a lake monster from Welsh mythology. It's said to be a crocodile, dwarf, demon or beaver hybrid. The lake where it lives also varies. It is variously said to live in El Awayan Lion, El Awayan Barfog, near Brinbirian Bridge or in El Awayan Yerafank, a lake near Betisikoid that was named after the creature. 
The Afank was a monstrous creature that, like most lake monsters, was said to prey upon any foolish enough to fall into or swim in its lake. One of the earliest descriptions of it is given by the 15th century poet Louise Glyn Cothai, who described it as living in Ella Wyan's Safadan or Langors Lake, now in Powys. One tale relates that it was rendered helpless by a maiden who let it sleep upon her lap. While it slept, the maiden's fellow villagers bound the creature in chains. The creature was awakened and made furious. Its enraged thrashings crushed the maiden, in whose lap it still lay. It was finally dragged away to the lake Cum Finnan, or killed by Pereter. In the tale, Pereter son of a frog, translated by Lady Charlotte Guest in the Mabinogen taken from the White Book of Ritterch and Red Book of her jest, the dank of the lake resides in a cave near the palace of the sons of the king of the tortures. The palace is so named as the Adank slays the three sons of the king each day, only for them to be resurrected by the maidens of the court. It is not stated why this cycle of violence continues, but when Pereter asks to ride with the three chieftains, who seek out the Adank daily, they state that they will not accept his company as if he was slain they would not be able to bring him back to life. Pereter continues to the cave on his own, wishing to kill the creature to increase his fame and honor. On his journey, he meets a maiden who states that the Adank will slay Pereter through cunning, as the beast is invisible and kills his victims with poison darts. The maiden, actually the queen of Constantinople, gives Pereter a seeing stone, which will make the creature visible. Pereter ventures into the cave and with the aid of the stone, pierces the Adank before beheading it. When the three chieftains arrive at the cave they state that it was predicted that Pereter would kill the Adank. Some legends ascribe the creature's death to King Arthur. Close to El Wyan Barfog in Snowdonia is a hoofprint petrosomatoglyph etched deep into the rock. Karn March Arthur, or the Stone of Arthur's Horse, which was supposedly made by King Arthur's Mount, Lamrai, when it was hauling the Afank from the lake. Igamuxa, a mythical creature that is said to have human-like features, but with eyes on its feet. It is said to inhabit the deserts of Africa and is known for its ability to outsmart and outmaneuver its prey. The Igamuxa is said to be a solitary creature and is known to be extremely fast and agile. It is said to be able to move quickly and silently, making it difficult to spot. Some legends say that the Igamuxa can even walk upside down, using its eyes on its feet to navigate. Amarok, a gigantic wolf that is said to hunt alone. It is said to inhabit the Arctic regions and is known for its massive size and strength. The Amarok is said to be a fierce predator, preying on large animals such as elk and reindeer. The creature is said to be extremely intelligent and cunning, using its vast knowledge of the Arctic terrain to stalk its prey. Almas, a wild man-like creature said to inhabit the mountainous regions of Central Asia. It is said to have human-like features but with a more ape-like appearance. It is said to be extremely strong and agile, with a height of around 6 to 7 feet tall. Some legends say that the Almas is a descendant of an ancient human species, while others say that it is a wild man who lives in the mountains. The Ahitsafal is from Aztec and Mayan mythology, though similar creatures are known to the Hopi and Shasta tribes of North America. Said to look like a small dog, the Ahutsavl had streaks on its head, small ears, and a hand at the tip of its tail. Scientists believe that the Ahutsavl may have actually existed and was a type of otter, or ferret which is also a relative of the otter. According to La Leyenda del Awaza, Era un ser terrible y mitológico de los Aztecas, the conquistador Hernán Cortés once reported to the king of Castile that one of his men had been killed by an Ahutsavl. According to legend, it would submerge itself in a lake or stream and begin to wail like a small child or a frightened woman. A passerby would hear the sound and would rush to the rescue of the helpless victim. Upon approaching the water the victim would be strangled by the creature's infamous tail hand and then the creature would tear out the victim's eyes, nails and teeth and eat them. It would then toss the lifeless body onto the riverbank and restart its wailing. Agripelter a creature that resembles a large beaver with a long tail, said to inhabit the remote wooded areas of North America. It is said to be extremely aggressive and territorial, known to attack humans who enter its territory. Some say it is a type of giant rodent, while others believe it to be a previously undiscovered species. Ahul, 
a large bat-like creature said to inhabit the rainforests of Java, Indonesia. It is said to have a wingspan of around 9 to 12 feet, and a body length of around 5 to 6 feet. It is said to have a distinctive hooting call, which is how it got its name. The ahul is said to be extremely elusive, and there is no concrete evidence of its existence. American hyena in the Great Plains of the American West, from at least Montana to Nebraska, there have been reports of an animal that seems to be a hyena. With a sloping back and hyena-like features, this beast was known to the Iowa Indians as the Shunka Warakin. Similar creatures with different names were reported from the lands of other tribes. The animal was generally described as having dark fur, often black and sometimes red. The shaggy areas were distributed in a different way than on wolves. White settlers also thought they had seen this creature, and some were even mounted as trophies. Although the present whereabouts of these trophies is now unknown, one famous trophy had a picture taken of it, although it might have been a strange-looking wolf mounted by an incompetent taxidermist. Only DNA testing could settle the question. As wild America was despoiled, sightings of the animal almost died out. Today, there are still a few, but they are complicated by confusions due to folklore, apparent supernatural characteristics, and likely confusion with other reports of wolves, wild dogs, and dog-like cryptids of several sorts. It is possible that this creature is a remnant that survived all the way up to a hundred years ago, only for the last pockets of survivors to be exterminated before being officially recognized by science. Even if this is the case, it is still of interest to cryptozoologists, whose line of work includes studying animals that happened to go extinct before we could identify them, if those animals survived thousands of years longer than they were supposed to. Or maybe it was the surviving chasmopores, an ancient species of hyena which was once widely distributed across North America. It went extinct because of humans and the end of the Ice Age. But maybe some species may make it up to this day and live with only a few people knowing. Altamahoha, a sea serpent said to inhabit the Altamaho River in Georgia, US. It is said to be around 50 to 60 feet long, with a long neck and a small head. It is said to have a grayish brown color and a smooth skin. The creature is said to be seen mostly in the summer months, and there have been several reported sightings of it over the years. A jewel, a large wolf-like creature said to inhabit the deserts of West Africa. It is said to have a reddish-brown coat and a long bushy tail. It is known for its distinctive howl and is said to be extremely aggressive and dangerous to humans. Some believe it is a wild dog or hyena, while others think it could be a previously undiscovered species. Agagui, a small, ape-like creature said to inhabit the tropical forests of East Africa. It is said to have a reddish-brown fur, and a height of around 3 to 4 feet. It usually stands from 1 to 1.7 meters tall with several human features. The creature is also said to have odd characteristics such as long arms and rusty-colored hair covering its body, with yellowish red skin under its coat. Sometimes it is described as copper. Its feet are roughly 12 centimeters long. The differences between the agagui and a modern chimpanzee is that the agagui has a rounded forehead, smaller but sharper teeth, and the hair and skin color. The first recorded sighting of the agagui was in 1900 by Captain William Hickens, but the incident was reported 37 years later in the December issue of the Discovery magazine. He was apparently in the Usher and Simbit forests, located on the western side of the Wember Plains in Tanzania. Hence, some years ago I was sent on an official lion hunt in this area. While waiting in a forest glade for a man-eater, I saw two small, brown, furry creatures come from the dense forest on one side of the glade and then disappear into the thicket on the other side. They were like little men, about four feet high, walking upright, but clad in russet hair. The native hunter with me gazed in mingled fear and amazement. He later remarked that they are the Agagui, the furry little men that one does not see once in a lifetime. But only one year later, British officer Cuthbert Burgoyne publicized an incident that happened in 1927 through the Discovery magazine 11 years later, in which he supposedly saw the same creatures that Hickens had seen years before. We were sufficiently near to land to see objects clearly with a glass of 12 magnifications. There was a sloping beach with light bush above upon which several dozen baboons were hunting for and picking up shellfish of crabs, 
to judge by their movements. Two pure white baboons were amongst them. These are very rare but I had heard of them previously. As we watched, two little brown men walked together out of the bush and down among the baboons. They were certainly not any known monkey and they must have been akin or they would have disturbed the baboons. They were too far away to see in detail, but these small human-like animals were probably between four and five feet tall, quite upright and graceful in figure. In the late 1950s, the third sighting was reported, this time it being Charles Cordier, a professional animal collector who allegedly saw the Agawi in Zaire. It was entangled in one of the bird's snares that he had set but escaped before he could do anything, as he said. It fell on its face, turned over, sat up, took the noose off its feet, and walked away before the nearby African could do anything. The Agawi is likely a surviving species of Australopithecine, a primate which lived 2.5 million years ago as a very early form of humans. Awaza a mythical creature said to inhabit the lakes and rivers of Mexico and Central America. It is said to be a type of water monster, with the body of a monkey and the tail of a fish. It is said to have webbed hands and feet, and is known for its ability to lure people to their death with its mesmerizing call. Amet, also known as Amet or Ahamet, is a goddess from ancient Egyptian mythology. She is often depicted as a monstrous creature with the head of a crocodile, the forelegs of a lion, and the hindquarters of a hippopotamus. Amet was believed to reside in the underworld and was associated with the god of the dead, Anubis. She was considered to be the devourer of the souls of the damned, and was said to be responsible for consuming the hearts of the deceased that were found to be unworthy by the gods during the judgment of the dead. According to Egyptian mythology, the soul of the deceased had to pass through a series of tests and judgment in the underworld where their heart was weighed against the feather of Maat by Anubis, who would then present the heart to Amit if it was deemed unworthy. Amit would then devour the heart, preventing the soul from achieving eternal life. Amit was also associated with the concept of divine retribution, as she was believed to be a powerful force that punished those who committed sins in life. She was often depicted in art as a terrifying creature, with her jaws wide open, ready to consume the hearts of the damned. The Aswang is a creature from Filipino folklore and is considered to be one of the most feared monsters in Philippine mythology. It is said to be a shapeshifter that can take on the form of a human during the day, but at night, it transforms into a monstrous creature with an insatiable appetite for human flesh. The Aswang is said to be a type of vampire that feeds on the blood and organs of pregnant women and babies, and it is also said to be able to steal the souls of the living. Some legends describe the Aswang as a woman who can detach her lower body and fly through the night sky, while others describe it as a man who can detach his upper body and become a giant bird. The Aswang is said to have the ability to shape shift into different forms, including a dog, a pig, or a bat. It is also said to have the ability to change its appearance to look like a normal human being, which makes it hard for people to identify it. Many methods are used to protect oneself from an Aswang such as placing thorns at the windows or doorways to prevent it from entering the house, leaving a light on at night, or using garlic and salt to repel it. Some people also believe that the Aswang can be defeated by the use of holy water, incantations, or by a skilled and powerful exorcist. The Adar LLWCH Gwyn is a creature from Welsh folklore. It is a type of a monstrous bird, said to have a beak full of razor-sharp teeth and talons that can tear flesh. It is said to live in the mountains and to prey on sheep and other livestock, as well as on humans. According to the legend, the Adar LLWCH Gwyn is a giant bird that is said to be so large that it can pick up a sheep or a man with its talons and carry them off to its nest. The bird is also said to be incredibly fierce, with a beak full of razor-sharp teeth. It is also said that the bird is a powerful omen of death and disaster, and that its appearance foretells war plague or other misfortunes. Alkanost, a creature from Russian folklore that has the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a bird. It is said to live in the underworld and is known for its beautiful singing voice. Aspidocalum, a giant sea serpent with a turtle-like shell that was said to be big enough to be mistaken for an island. It was known to lure sailors with the promise of refuge, but instead would sink their ships. Alex, a type of spirit or goblin from Mayan folklore, 
They were said to be small, mischievous, and live in caves and rock formations. They are known to play tricks on humans and cause mischief, but can also bring good luck. Anakim, a race of giant people mentioned in the Bible, said to have inhabited the land of Canaan before the Israelites arrived. They were known for their strength and height. Some traditions describe them as being up to 12 feet tall. A sag, a Sumerian demon or monster said to be made of metal and stone, it was said to devour people and animals alike. It was believed to be controlled by the gods and sent to punish those who angered them. Adhin, a type of fairy from the Isle of Man, it is said to possess the power to shapeshift and can take on the form of an animal, bird or insect. It is known for its mischievous nature and is said to play tricks on humans. Anansi, a trickster figure from West African and Caribbean folklore, it is a spider and is known for its cunning and intelligence. It is said to possess the power to control stories and is known for tricking other animals and humans alike. Asmodeus, a demon from Jewish folklore, he is known for his association with lust and is said to be able to appear as a handsome man to seduce women. He is also known to cause conflict between married couples and is said to be able to control the winds. Akrab Wamalu, a creature from Babylonian and Persian mythology. It is a human-scorpion hybrid and is said to guard the sun god's palace. It was known for its strength and ferocity and was said to be able to control the elements. Anansi. Anansi is a trickster figure in West African and Caribbean folklore, most notably in the Ashanti culture of Ghana. He is typically portrayed as a spider and is known for his cunning and ability to outsmart other animals and humans. He is a popular figure in folktales and is known for his wit and intelligence. One story goes that Anansi, the spider, was very poor and had nothing to offer the sky god. He wanted to have all the stories in the world, so he went to the sky god and asked him for all the stories in the world. The sky god agreed to give Anansi all the stories but only if he completed a series of tasks. Anansi successfully completed the tasks, and as a reward, the sky god gave him all the stories in the world. From then on, Anansi was known as the keeper of stories, and he shared them with the people of the world. Angao, Angao is a figure from Australian Aboriginal mythology, typically associated with the land and the spirits of the dead. He is often depicted as a powerful and benevolent spirit who is associated with the afterlife and the spiritual realm. In one story, Angao was said to be the spirit of a great warrior who, upon his death, was given the responsibility to protect the land and the people. He was said to walk the land at night, watching over the people and warding off any evil spirits that may try to harm them. Enji. Enji is a figure from the mythology of the Ainu people of Japan. He is typically associated with the natural world and is often depicted as a hunter or a fisherman. He is known for his strength and courage and is revered as a protector and guide for the Ainu people. According to one story, Enji was once a mortal hunter who had the ability to communicate with the spirits of the animals he hunted. One day, the spirits of the animals approached him and asked him to become their protector and guardian. Enji accepted the task and became a powerful spirit known for his hunting skills and his ability to protect the Ainu people from harm. Enkit Enkit is an ancient Egyptian goddess of the Nile, who was associated with the annual flooding of the river and the fertile land it left behind. She was depicted as a woman with a tall headdress of water plants, and was often shown holding a scepter of papyrus. According to one story, Enkit was once a mortal woman who lived along the Nile. She was known for her beauty and her kind heart, and the people of the land came to her for help and guidance. One day, the god of the Nile, Happy, saw her and was struck by her beauty. He asked her to become his wife and the goddess of the Nile. Enkid accepted, and from then on, she was known as the goddess of the Nile and the protector of the land. The Abgalu, also known as the Abgal or Abgalu, are a group of seven Sumerian sages or demigods who are featured in Sumerian mythology and ancient Mesopotamian religion. They are said to have been created by the god Enki to bring civilization to mankind by teaching them various skills such as writing, farming, and medicine. The Apkalu are often depicted as having the upper body of a human and the lower body of a fish, and are said to have come from the Abzu, a freshwater ocean located beneath the earth in Sumerian belief.
They are also believed to have been the founders of many Sumerian cities and were considered to be the source of wisdom and knowledge for the people. The Apkal are sometimes grouped together with other similar figures in Mesopotamian mythology such as the Adapa, who is also said to have been a sage and culture bringer, and the Anunnaki, a group of deities who were responsible for the creation of mankind. In addition to their role as culture bringers and sages, the Apkalu were also associated with the healing arts. They were believed to have the ability to cure diseases and were often depicted holding medicinal plants. They were also said to have the power to restore life to the dead. Ardit Lily, a female demon from Sumerian and Akkadian mythology, it is said to be a seductress that preys on men and causes them to have nightmares. It was also believed to be able to cause disease and death. Awaza, a mythical creature from Aztec folklore, it is said to be a dog-like creature with a hand on the end of its tail. It is said to live in the water and is known for its ability to steal objects and people with its hand. It was also believed to be able to change shape and was known for its mischievous and sneaky nature. Apis, a divine bull worshipped in ancient Egypt, it was believed to be the embodiment of the god Ta and was said to have healing powers. The Apis bull was considered to be a manifestation of the god and was said to have certain physical characteristics such as a white triangle on its forehead. Aluxa, a type of spirit or goblin from Mayan folklore, they were said to be small, mischievous, and live in caves and rock formations. They are known to play tricks on humans and cause mischief, but can also bring good luck. They were believed to be the protectors of the land and its resources. Aji Dahaka, a dragon-like creature from Zoroastrian mythology. It was said to have three heads and six eyes and was known for its ferocity and destruction. It was believed to be the enemy of the god Ahura Mazda and was said to be the source of all evil in the world. Asag, a Sumerian demon or monster said to be made of metal and stone, it was said to devour people and animals alike. It was believed to be controlled by the gods and sent to punish those who angered them. It was considered a powerful and fearsome creature in Sumerian mythology. Atsa, a Basque creature, Atsa is a demon in the form of a bull that appears at night near caves and crossroads. It is known to attack and kill travelers who are out after dark. It is said that the Atsa can be tamed by a brave young man and become a powerful protector. Alicanto or Alicanto are nocturnal, luminescent birds that live in the caves and mines of Chile. At night, their feathers shine with metallic color, and their eyes emit strange lights. Alicanto are often depicted as large birds, but the size and shape usually vary depending on the sighting or tail. There are two types of Alicanto, one which feeds on silver, and one which feeds on gold, sometimes eating so much that they weigh too much to fly. The color and glow of their feathers depend on their diet. They nest near hills that contain the precious stones that they eat. Spotting an alicanto is said to bring good luck. If a miner can find and follow an alicanto for a while without being caught, the miner will find silver and or gold. However, if the alicanto discovers them, it will push the person off of a cliff or lure them into a deep ravine where they fall to their death. Although, it's also said that alicanto will help humans that they favor to find gold and silver, as long as the human shares what they find with the bird. Adlet, an inner creature, Adlet is a giant dog-like creature with fur on one side of its body and human-like skin on the other. It is said to be able to speak and is known for its intelligence. It is said to be a fierce hunter and is known for its stamina and endurance. Aspidocalone, a giant sea serpent with a turtle-like shell that was said to be big enough to be mistaken for an island. It was known to lure sailors with the promise of refuge, but instead would sink their ships. It was believed to be a dangerous creature that lived in the oceans. The Abadwa is a cryptid from the folklore of the Kosa people of South Africa. According to legend, the Abadwa are tiny, dwarf-like creatures that are said to be very fast and agile. They are also said to be very intelligent and possess magical powers, including the ability to make themselves invisible to humans. They are said to live in the forest, in caves or in the hollows of trees. They are also said to be very fierce and dangerous, and it is said that they can kill humans with a single arrow or by causing them to die of a disease. The Abadwa are also said to be very territorial and to guard the resources of the forest, such as fruits and medicinal plants, fiercely. 
They are also believed to be the cause of several diseases that affect the Kosa people, such as tuberculosis. In some versions of the legend, the Abadwa are said to be the spirits of stillborn children, or of children who died before being named. They are also said to be the guardians of the forest, and to have a close relationship with the animals that live there. Explorer X here. If you're enjoying this, go and subscribe. It will alert you to new content and help show me you want this channel to grow. It requires a lot of time, research and effort for these videos. There's a reason this is literally the internet's first, and YouTube first. Prove me wrong, link me anything that comes close to the letter A for cryptids and folklore. The Aragonacleta is a creature from Argentinian Toba folklore, known as the ruler of all snakes in the world. It is believed to possess the ability to control every snake, and is associated with rainbows, water and storms. This legendary creature is said to reside near bodies of water such as lakes and rivers, or in deep caves that have access to water. In appearance, the Aragonacleta is described as a large, multicolored serpent, usually around 10 meters in length. It is said to resemble a bushmaster, and has a large red crest on its head. It also has a saw-like structure on its body that enables it to move, and its tail is said to end in two hooks that it uses to capture prey. According to Toba folklore, the females of this species are the mothers of all snakes. Additionally, it is said that they possess the ability to shape-shift, and are intelligent creatures that enjoy human conversation. They are also believed to be protective of nature, and will punish those who desecrate it. Akurokamwi is a gigantic part human part octopus monster from Ainu and Shinto folklore, which lurks in Funka Bay in Hokkaido, Japan, and has been sighted in several other locations including Taiwan and Korea for centuries. This creature is also known as Ashkatan Mat. According to Shinto mythology, the creature is human-like and contains a bright red color. The 19th century account by John Batchelor confirms this. His book, The Ainu and Their Folklore, provides many details of the creature. It states that the creature was 120 meters in length. The book specifies that the red color of the Akurokamwi is striking red, seemingly. Likened to the color of the reflection of the setting sun upon water, the Akurokamwi is also characteristically described with the ability to self-amputate like several octopus species and regenerate limbs. This characteristic manifests in the belief in Shinto that Akurokamwi has healing powers. Consequently, it is believed among followers that giving offerings to Akurokamwi will heal ailments of the body, in particular, disfigurements and broken limbs. Neidyakushi is housed within the Takoyakushi-do, a shrine dedicated to Neidyakushi, along the street Teramachidori, meaning, Temple Town, in Kyoto. I shall swallow the whale and ship, empty the sea, and appear in red when you are cursed. Akurokamwi once, spirits cursed Rebunj, a villager of Abuda Tuura, to see the destruction of his town. They sent a part spider part human creature, Yashikepu, to fulfill the curse. Yashikepu caused rampant destruction throughout the town, slaughtering so many that the streets were filled with crimson blood. After hearing the townsfolk tremble with fear, the sea Kami, Rapunkamwi, transformed Yashikepu into an octopus, and cast her into the sea. After Yashikepu was cast into the sea, her size began to grow, eventually beginning to consume larger prey, such as whales and ships. One day, Akurokamwi gobbled up a boat full of fishermen. In her stomach, they called for help. Hearing the cries, Rapunkamwi poisoned Akurokamwi, giving her great pain. As Akurokamwi hollered in agony, the fishermen escaped. However, Akurokamwi learned to harness the venom, using it to attack her prey. In a 1800 sighting, John Batchelor stated that as the monster attacked the ship, it emitted a dark fluid which has a very powerful and noxious odor, confirming the myth's actuality. I knew reverence of this monster has permeated into Shintoism, which has incorporated Akurokamwi as a minor kami. Self-purification practices for Akurokamwi are often strictly followed. While Akurokamwi is often presented as a benevolent kami with powers to heal and bestow knowledge, it is fickle and has the propensity to do harm. Akurokamwi's nature as an octopus means that it is persistent, and it is near impossible to escape its grasp without permission. Like other Shinto purification rituals, 
prior to entering the shrine of Akuro Kamui. One's hands must be cleaned with water with the exception that one's feet must also be cleaned as well. Akuro Kamui enjoys the sea and offerings which reflect this. Fish, crab, mollusks, and the like are particular favorites of Akuro Kamui, which give back that which it gave. Homage to Akuro Kamui is often for ailments of the limbs or skin, but mental purification and spiritual release is particularly important. Shrines and dedication to Akuro Kamui and associated octopus deity are found throughout Japan. In particular, well-known shrines include one in Kyoto and the island of Hokkaido that pay homage to Nade Yakushi. These shrines, while named to different entities, come from and share various characteristics with Akuro Kamui, and as such practices involving healing, renewal, and purification are similar. Australian Raptor, in Australia, there have been various accounts of supposed living dinosaurs, specifically in the Darling Downs, a farming region in southeast Queensland. Farmers have reported strange noises, which some cryptozoologists have linked to the ornithopod dinosaur Mutaburosaurus. This dinosaur lived in what is now northeastern Australia during the Cretaceous period, between 112 and 99.6 million years ago. However, it is important to note that these reports of strange noises could also be attributed to other animals native to Australia, such as koalas and crocodiles. In addition to the Mutaburosaurus, there are other supposed dinosaur-like cryptids in Australia. One such creature is the Beringer, which is said to be a living prehistoric being, with some theorizing it could be a living Australovenator or other Megaraptorid. However, it should be noted that there is no scientific evidence to support the existence of these creatures, and the reports of their sightings are likely to be misinterpretations of known animals or folklore. The Ali, also known as the Aia Napa Sea Monster, is a legendary creature said to dwell off the coast of Aia Napa in Cyprus. The creature is known to local fishermen as to Felico Terrace, which translates to the friendly monster. Sightings of the Ali are most commonly reported around Cape Greco, and it is said to be responsible for ripping and dragging away fishing nets. Despite this, it is not known to cause harm to humans. There is no concrete evidence of the Ali's existence, and sightings are often reported by tourists and locals. Some locals have compared the creature to the Loch Ness Monster, and it has been speculated to be a crocodile or serpent. The creature was featured on an episode of the Psy FY channel series, Destination Truth, and a search for the monster has been conducted by government officials. The Ali is also linked to the mythical sea monster of Greek mythology called Scylla, which is depicted in the mosaics of the House of Dionysus, a Roman villa from the 3rd century AD in Paphos, Cyprus. Despite a lack of concrete evidence, the hope of spotting the Ali remains a highlight for many tourists on boating day trips. Many hotels in the area boast proximity to sightings of the creature, but it should be noted that there is no link to any such sea monster or any monster said to be living in Curry's Dam, which are more likely to be crocodile-type creatures that were kept as pets but unlawfully released. Adenadera, also known as the Atinara, is a creature from the mythology of the Koyakon people of Alaska. According to Koyakon legends, the Adenatara is a giant bird that lives in the remote mountain ranges of the region. It is known for its powerful talons and sharp beak, which it uses to capture and kill its prey. The Adenatara is said to be a fierce predator and is known for its hunting skills, able to take down large animals like moose and caribou. In addition to its hunting abilities, the Adenatara is also said to have the ability to fly at great speeds and can travel long distances. The Koyakon people believe that the Adenatara is a powerful spirit and is respected for its strength and hunting skills. They also believe that the Adenatara has the ability to control the weather and can create storms with its powerful wings. In Koyakon stories, the Adenatara is often depicted as a wise and powerful creature and is often seen as a symbol of strength and endurance. It is said to be able to withstand the harsh conditions of the Alaskan wilderness and is known for its courage and determination. Some Koyakon people also believe that the Adenatara has healing powers and that its feathers can be used to cure a variety of ailments. They believe that by wearing a feather from the Adenatara, one can gain the bird's strength and power. The Apotropaeus is a figure from ancient Greek mythology, 
also known as Apotropos or Apotropos. He is the personification of protection against evil influences, and is often depicted as a demon-slaying hero or a protector against the evil eye. In ancient Greece, the Apotropaeus was invoked in various rituals and incantations to protect against evil influences and malevolent spirits. He was also a popular figure in amulets and charms, which were worn to ward off evil and bring good luck. One of the most famous stories about the Apotropaeus is the story of Perseus, who defeated the Gorgon Medusa, a monster whose gaze would turn anyone who looked at her to stone. Perseus, being able to look at Medusa through his shield, which was given to him by Athena, was able to cut off Medusa's head and become a powerful Apotropaeus himself. In art, the Apotropaeus is often depicted as a young man or a warrior, holding a weapon such as a sword or a spear, and sometimes wearing a helmet or carrying a shield. He is also depicted with the attributes of a demon-slaying hero, such as a club or a net. The eye is a creature steeped in mystery and superstition. Its dark eyes, long fingers, and ghoulish appearance have led many to believe that it is a creature of darkness, capable of sneaking into the dwellings of nearby villagers and using its long middle finger to pierce the hearts of sleeping humans. It is believed that the eye is a harbinger of death, and its presence is seen as a bad omen. Many people in Madagascar believe that the eye has the power to steal the souls of the living, and that it is capable of causing illness and death simply by looking at a person. This belief is likely rooted in the eye's nocturnal habits and its ability to extract insects from wood, which may have led people to associate it with death and the afterlife. Despite these legends, the eye is a unique and fascinating creature that plays an important role in the ecosystem of Madagascar. It is a threatened species, with its population declining due to habitat loss and hunting. Conservation efforts are ongoing to protect the eye and its habitat. It is important to note that these are legends and superstitions, and it is not scientifically proven that the eye has any harmful effect on humans. The eye is a fascinating and unique creature that is an important part of the ecosystem of Madagascar. Agatha Demon is a figure from ancient Greek and Roman mythology. The name, Agatha Demon, is derived from the Greek words, agathos, meaning good, or noble, and daimon, meaning spirit or demon. As such, Agatha demon is often depicted as a benevolent spirit or demon that brings good fortune and prosperity. In ancient Greek and Roman mythology, Agatha demon is associated with the god Hermes and the goddess Aphrodite. He is often depicted as a serpent or a serpent-like creature and is said to have healing powers. He was also seen as a guardian of the household and was often invoked to bring prosperity and good fortune to the home. In ancient Greece, statues of Agatha demon were placed in the homes of the wealthy, especially in the dining room, as it was believed that he would bring good luck, health, and prosperity to the household. He was also invoked in religious ceremonies and was believed to be a protector of the people. One popular story about Agatha demon is about a young man named Aesculapius, who was said to have been able to heal people with the help of Agatha demon. According to the story, Aesculapius was able to heal people from even the most serious illnesses by invoking the help of Agatha demon. He was eventually made a god because of his healing powers, and was known as the god of medicine and healing. Another story is about a wealthy merchant who invoked the help of Agatha demon to bring him good fortune in his business. He was said to have made a statue of Agatha demon and placed it in his home, and it brought him great wealth and prosperity. The Akiyini is a skeleton spirit in Inuit folklore, also known as the Ghost of Alaska. According to the legend, he causes tidal waves and earthquakes by moving his arms, which is said to be due to his habit of dancing and playing music when he was alive. It is said that even in death, he continues to use his arm bone as a drumstick and his scapula as a drum. The Akiyini is believed to be a powerful and dangerous spirit. In traditional Inuit beliefs, it was said that the Akiyini's movements could cause natural disasters such as tidal waves and earthquakes, which could lead to the destruction of homes and loss of lives. In some versions of the stories, the Akiyini was said to be a powerful shaman who had the ability to control the elements and cause natural disasters. He was feared and respected by the Inuit people, 
who believed that he had the power to bring both good and bad luck. In other versions, Akiyini is a spirit of death and destruction, who brings death to the living and destroys everything in its path. One story tells of an Inuit village that was plagued by earthquakes and tidal waves. The villagers, desperate for a solution, turned to the local shaman for help. The shaman advised them to offer a sacrifice to the Akiini, in the hopes of appeasing the spirit and stopping the natural disasters. The villagers followed the shaman's advice and offered a sacrifice, and the earthquakes and tidal waves stopped. The Anku is a figure from Breton folklore in the region of Brittany, France. It is said to be the personification of death, and is often depicted as a tall, ominous figure dressed in a long black cloak, a wide-brimmed hat, and a scythe, similar to the Grim Reaper. According to legend, the Anku is the first person to die in a parish during the year. He then becomes the leader of the dead, who follow him in a procession, collecting the souls of the deceased throughout the year. The Anku is said to drive a cart or a coach, pulled by black horses, and is often accompanied by his minions, the souls of the dead. In some legends, the Anku is said to be a lonely figure who collects souls out of a sense of duty, while in others, he is said to be a menacing figure who enjoys his work and delights in the suffering of the souls he collects. In Brittany, it is said that people can hear the Anku's cart approaching on a stormy night, and that the sound of his wheels on the cobblestones is a warning to the living that death is near. Alea, also known as Marsh Ghost Light, or Ghost Light, is a phenomenon that is said to occur in marshy or swampy areas in Bengal, India. According to local folklore, Alea is caused by the spirits of dead fishermen who are said to be trapped in the marsh, and they create a ghostly blue light to lure unsuspecting travelers into the marsh. The light is said to appear at night and is often described as being blue or green in color. Fishermen and boatmen in the region believe that encountering Alea is considered bad luck and can lead to accidents or death. They believe that the spirits of the dead fishermen, who died in accidents in the marsh, are still trapped there and they create the light to lure people into the marsh, where they become trapped and die as well. There are also some scientific explanations for the Alea phenomenon. It is said that the light is caused by the combustion of gases such as methane and phosphine, which are emitted by decaying organic matter in the marsh. This is known as swamp gas, or will-o'-the-wisp. In addition to the above, it's said that the Alea phenomenon is not only restricted to Bengal, but has also been reported in other marshy areas of India and other countries as well. The phenomenon can happen anywhere where marshy land and water bodies are present. The phenomenon is also said to be more common during the monsoon season when the water level in the marsh is high and the organic matter in the marsh is more likely to decompose, releasing gases like methane and phosphine. Gases can then be ignited by natural sources of heat or electricity, such as lightning strikes, resulting in ghostly blue light. Some people also believe that Alea is a sign of the presence of supernatural beings or spirits, and they believe that the light is a way for the spirits to communicate with the living. It's said that if you are able to capture the light in a jar, you will be able to communicate with the spirit and ask for its blessings. Fishermen in the region have their own way of dealing with Alea. They light up their boats with lanterns, and they avoid venturing into the marshes during the night. They also recite prayers and mantras to keep themselves safe from the spirits. In heraldry, the Alicamelus is a mythical creature that is depicted as having the head of a donkey and the body of a camel. It was first used as a crest for the English Eastland Company, a medieval trading company based in London that traded with countries around the Baltic Sea. The company was active in the late 14th and early 15th centuries and the Alicamelus was used as a symbol of the company's ability to traverse the land and sea. The Alicamelus is considered to be a composite creature, as it combines the characteristics of two different animals, the donkey and the camel. The donkey represents the land while the camel represents the desert, and its ability to survive in harsh conditions. This composite creature was chosen to symbolize the company's ability to trade in land and sea routes, and its ability to adapt to different conditions. Later on, the Alicamelus was also used by the Russian Empire as a symbol of its ability to traverse the land and sea as well, and its adaptability to different conditions. In heraldry, the Alicamelus is considered a symbol of adaptability, versatility, 
and resilience. It's also considered a symbol of resourcefulness, as it combines the strength of the camel and the intelligence of the donkey, making it a powerful and capable creature. Akrabwamalu Akrabwamalu is a creature from the mythology of ancient Mesopotamia. It is a Scorpio centaur, with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a scorpion. It is considered the god of war and guardian of the night sky. According to one story, Akrabwamalu was once a great warrior who fought against the enemies of Mesopotamia. He was known for his courage and his ability to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies. When he died, he was deified and given the task of protecting the land and the people from harm. Arjesh Arjesh is one of the three cyclops in Greek mythology, known for their strength and skill in metalworking. They were said to live in a cave on a mountain, and were known for their ability to make thunderbolts for Zeus. According to one story, Arjesh was once a mortal smith who was renowned for his skill in metalworking. He was approached by Zeus, who asked him to create a powerful weapon. Arjesh agreed, and after many months of hard work, he created a thunderbolt for Zeus. In return, Zeus granted Arjesh immortality and a place among the gods. A Sag A Sag is a demon from Sumerian mythology, often depicted as a fierce monster with multiple heads, who is associated with disease and death. According to one story, a Sag was once a mortal king who was known for his cruelty and his willingness to sacrifice his own people to the gods. When he died, he was punished by the gods and turned into a demon forced to roam the earth and spread disease and death among the living. Atomy Atomy is a creature from English folklore, typically described as a small, mischievous demon that is said to cause mischief and trouble. According to one story, Atomy was once a mortal man who was known for his pranks and his love of causing trouble. When he died, he was punished by being turned into a demon and forced to spend eternity causing mischief and trouble among the living. A Vank a Vank is a creature from Welsh mythology, typically described as a giant water monster that lives in rivers and lakes. It is known for its strength and ferocity, and is said to be able to drag people and boats into the water. According to one story, a Vank was once a giant serpent that lived in a lake. It was feared by the people who lived nearby, who believed it was able to drag boats and people into the water. One day, a brave warrior came to the lake and fought a Vank ultimately killing it and freeing the people from its terror. According to legends, the offhawker often takes the form of a small animal such as a fox or a hare, and uses this disguise to sneak into homes and steal food or other valuables. It is also said to have the ability to transform into a human and infiltrate communities, using its disguise to trick and deceive people. The offhawker is also known for its ability to shape-shift into a specific animal, usually a donkey or horse and wait outside of a house for someone to steal from them. Once someone is caught, it would leap on their back, and would not let go until it was given something in return. In some legends, the offhawker is said to be a mischievous and playful creature, while in others it is seen as a malicious and dangerous being. It is said that it could be driven away by making loud noises or by throwing salt at it. Awadol Awadol is a creature from Slavic folklore, typically described as a small, mischievous demon that is said to cause mischief and trouble. According to one story, Awadol was once a mortal man who was known for his pranks and his love of causing trouble. When he died, he was punished by being turned into a demon and forced to spend eternity causing mischief and trouble among the living. He is often depicted as a small impish creature with sharp claws and a mischievous grin. Azathoth Azathoth is a deity or cosmic entity in the fiction of H. P. Lovecraft and other writers. It is described as a monstrous, blind idiot god that sits at the center of infinity and rules over all of reality. It is often portrayed as a being of pure chaos and destruction and is said to be worshipped by cults and other nefarious groups. According to Lovecraft's story, Azathoth is said to be the ruler of all reality and the creator of the universe, but its mindless and chaotic nature makes it indifferent to the fate of the world and its inhabitants. The Astami is a figure from ancient Indian mythology. Astami are a race of people who are said to live without eating or drinking, and instead survive on the fragrance of sweet-smelling fruits and flowers. 
They are said to inhabit the Himalayan regions and are often described as being small in stature with a delicate and ethereal appearance. In Hindu mythology, Astami are considered to be one of the 14 types of superhuman beings or minor deities known as the Karanjivi, which are considered to be immortal and are said to have the ability to live for thousands of years. Astami are considered to be very wise and spiritual beings, and it is said that they have the ability to live in harmony with nature and the environment. They are often depicted as peaceful, gentle, and kind-hearted people. In Buddhist mythology, Astami are also considered to be a race of people who are said to live without eating or drinking, and are said to inhabit the highest regions of the Himalayas. They are said to be the followers of the Buddha, and they are considered to be very wise and spiritual beings. The Aztec death whistle is a type of ancient wind instrument that was used by the Aztecs in pre-Columbian Mexico. The whistle is made of clay and is shaped like a skull. It produces a loud, high-pitched, and eerie sound that is said to resemble the screams of the dead. The Aztec death whistle was primarily used in religious ceremonies, particularly those associated with death and warfare. The sound was believed to represent the cries of the souls of the dead and was thought to help guide the souls of the fallen to the afterlife. The whistle was also used to intimidate and scare the enemy during warfare. The Aztec death whistle was also used in human sacrifice ceremonies, where the sound was thought to be the voice of the gods calling for the sacrifice. The whistle was blown before, during and after the sacrifice, as a way to communicate with the gods and to guide the soul of the sacrificed person to the afterlife. The Aztec death whistle is considered a remarkable ancient instrument, both for its eerie sound and for its unique design. The whistles have been found in archaeological digs in Mexico and are now highly valued by collectors of ancient artifacts. The ardent lily is a female demon from ancient Babylonian and Akkadian mythology. She is described as a night demon and is said to be a seductress who preys on men. She is also known as a night hag or night woman and is associated with the night, storms, and the underworld. According to legends, the ardent lily is a succubus-like demon that visits men in their sleep, stealing their semen and leaving them weak and diseased. She is said to be the daughter of the demon Lilu, and is often portrayed as a beautiful woman with long hair and a seductive gaze. Some scholars believe that the ardent lily was originally a goddess of the night sky, but over time her character was demonized. Other legends say that the ardent lily is a female demon who has the power to cause storms and tempests, and that she is also associated with the underworld. One story goes that a young man named Enkimdu once went to sleep in his room, but in the middle of the night he woke up with a beautiful woman sitting next to him. She told him her name was Ardent Lily, and that she was a demon of the night, who came to visit men in their sleep. She then seduced him and drained him of his energy leaving him weak and sick. Air rods, called flying rods, and sometimes referred to as sky fish, are something like crop circles in that even skeptics acknowledge their existence. The only question is what they really are. Air rods have never been seen live with the naked eye, but are picked up by cameras and cell phones all over the world. Are they living creatures, alien probes, or some sort of 3D electromagnetic smudge? To believers in the cryptozoology-based theory of air rods, air rods are probably living creatures, and they are possibly related to older stories of atmospheric beasts. However, these cryptids are a well-known phenomenon in the photography world. Air rods are video artifacts created from motion blur, especially in interlaced video recording, and are afterimage trails, typically of flying creatures, especially insects. As such, belief in these cryptids is practically non-existent in those versed in photography. Air rods might not be made of matter. Air rods are made of electromagnetic fluxes or some other form of energy. Air rods are made of some undiscovered, fifth phase of matter. If air rods could have evolved from the organisms that are native to the clouds, air rods may be tears in reality, or condensed strings at first glance, air rods seem bizarre, otherworldly, or even terrifying. The most studied air rod films showed air rods swooping within a dozen feet of the camera, coming close to the ground and going between objects with nearby trees and bushes visible behind the air rods. The rods moved with fluidity not unlike a worm's, and were exceptionally agile, 
appearing to fly with some unknown method that violated all of the known laws of physics. However, more careful investigation reveals a clear, convincing explanation. The Abura Samashi is a cryptid from the folklore of Japan. According to legend, the Abura Samashi is a creature that lives in the mountains and is said to have a human-like face and a body covered in fur. It is said to be very strong and fierce, and to have the ability to change its shape. It is also said to have a very strong and unpleasant smell, hence its name, Abura Samashi, which literally means oily head in Japanese. In some versions of the legend, the Abura Samashi is said to be a vengeful spirit, who seeks to harm humans who enter the forest or mountains where it lives. In other versions, it is said to be a protector of the mountains and to attack only those who harm the environment or the animals that live there. The Abura Samashi is also believed to cause various illnesses and misfortunes, such as headaches, fever, and even death. It is said that people can protect themselves from the Abura Samashi by carrying a talisman or by avoiding to go to the mountains at night. Explorer X here, so tell me, was I exaggerating on this being an internet and YouTube first for the letter A on cryptids and folklore? I will make the next letter once we reach 600 subscribers. Until next time my friends, Explorer X out.